Alrighty, hello you guys. So it's good to be back with you. We missed you being off last week. I was up in the mountains skiing, cross country skiing and snowboarding, and um, I have the bruises to prove it. <laughs> um, it's <laughs> always interesting to do sports that you haven't done for a long time, but I managed to uh, come back without any mishaps. You know, they say in, in flying, a good flight is one you walk away from, and a good skiing trip is one you walk back into your home without any broken bones. So <laughs> I managed to pull that off. All right, let's see who's here. We've got uh, one, two. Hi, hello. And Yvette is there, and Amy. Hi, Amy. Good to see you guys. Uh, we're going to have some fun today. A couple of things of note. We, we have, Jared and I have been working very hard for the last very hard. several <laughs> weeks. Yeah, uh, Creating a brand new course. This is the new edition of Advancing Your Photography. There it is. If you do not own a copy of this, we will give it to you free. You just pay the shipping. Jared will put a link in there. Um, this is 2020 edition, brand new. Uh, so we made a new course to go along with the new book. The book, okay, it's not totally changed. There are just updates in it. But the course is brand new. We've made a, an entire, essentially, you see me on the camera, this entire course. And the other cool thing is if you order the book, you'll also have the option to get my other book, Create, and uh, my composition book. You can get all three. Anyway, that's the news is we're going to sample in a minute a little bit uh, a couple of songs that we have as an intro, and we just kind of want to get your feedback. So this is kind of your chance to steer us in the right direction. Okay. So let's just get this party started here, okay? So I'm Mark Silber. I'm an author, photographer, etc., educator in Carmel, California. Love teaching you guys and helping you advance your photography. That's my goal and my purpose. Um, and let's not forget that this show is brought to you by our good friends at Bay Photo. I love these guys. I've been working with them since they were a tiny little place in Santa Cruz. And now they're huge. They're international, certainly national. And they just give great, their services just continue to improve. You can get metal prints. I have a few of these. These are pretty cool. You hang them on the wall like that. There's a wedding couple in Yosemite. That's kind of interesting. So 15% off on those metal prints. They're really cool. You should try one out. And albums, you want to make an album, 30% off. And there's a whole variety. One of the things about Bay Photo is they have so many different options on all these. So when you go there, when you click on it, you can see the different options. And then, as always, you're going to get 25% off on your first order. Listen, how many times have you heard me say, make prints, put prints on your wall? It's so satisfying, and it's, it's like your foremost way of getting your work out to the world. That's where photography started. You know, long before we had social media and other ways to show your work, we put prints on the wall or we put them in books. Social media is what I call fast food of photography. Prints on a wall, that's a, that's a meal. That's something that you can continue to look at and your friends can look at. So do that. All right, now I want to remind you, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe and enable the bell, because if you don't enable the bell, you're not going to get notified of our new shows. By the way, we're, gonna, we're starting a whole new season here. Once we get this course wrapped up next week, I'm going into a whole new phase. We're going to bring you uh, sections of the course. We're going to do me out shooting and all kinds of cool stuff. So that's coming up. You do not want to miss those things. Have I forgotten anything, Jared? I think we covered no, all No, I think, I think uh, other than 
uh, if story. you want to submit yeah your story and before we do that just to give people a chance if you want your photo to be considered you can join us uh, in the AYP club on Facebook and submit your images there. I'll be putting a link in the description. It is not too late to submit your photos. I may uh, still get them selected if you submit them here during the show. I so, and saw, with that, yeah. I think you can do your story. I'll do my story. And I saw somebody just joined this morning, and I would like to welcome you. We had several people join. Ah, yeah. Do, do you know who they are? We might announce them. Uh, oh, I don't okay. know off the top of my head. A lot of them, there, there were just a lot of requests. I see Amy joined, Ralph joined, and two others, but That's I already awesome. accepted them. So. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so I, you know, start off the critique with my own story. Do you know the term closet shopping, right? Have you heard of that? You go into your own closet and you find, oh, wow, there's a pair of jeans I haven't worn in a long time. That's pretty cool. Or you find a jacket. Or a shirt like this, you know. Well, I find I do closet shopping with photographs quite frequently. It's interesting. So I'm going to show you, when we put the video together, the course, you know, we use a lot of what's called B-roll, which is auxiliary footage. Here I am talking on camera. Well, you don't want to just hear my, see me. You, want to, you also want to see what I'm talking about. So we put a lot of video footage in there. And in looking for one particular section... I came across a few photos that I had actually never really done anything with, but I want to tell you this whole little story. So about 10 years ago, uh, my wife and I and some friends were traveling in Morocco, and we went all through Morocco. This was in Fez, and <clears throat> in uh, Morocco, in Fez, for sure, and I think a couple of other cities, they have what's called a Medina, which is, the Medina is like this inner city and it's really built like a fortress. There are no windows facing outwards because that would be a place where you could penetrate. So everything is enclosed inside this little city within a city. And there's shops, there's schools. I'm going to show you some pictures. There's really a whole community there. Okay, so I'm photographing inside this Medina and uh, I was standing inside this shop. What you're seeing here, I'm assuming everybody can see this, right? Jared, you can see that, right? Yep, I can okay, see it. Good. I'm going to just play this little video. So what you're going to see is I'm standing inside this shop, and people are walking by. First two are my wife and her best friend, and then some other people. And, and I try to figure out how to turn this into a series of photographs. But let me just play this, and you'll you'll see basically what I saw, you know, at that time. And then you'll see what, how I basically dealt with it. So let me find it in the preview and it's nowhere to be found. Where is this thing on my desktop? One of the things that happens when you have so many things open, which I do at once. Oh, there it is. Quick time. Okay. So I'll just play this little snippet here and you can see what I saw. Kind of cool, people walking by. Okay, so that's, I, I took some more footage, but that's just a little snippet of it. Um, now, how do I turn that into an interesting uh, photograph? Well, so here's some, uh, let me get, bear with me, let's get that preview there, okay. So here's some, I'm giving you the punchline before I wanted to. Let's go back here a little bit. So these are just, again, some shots within the Medina. You can see it's completely enclosed, and it's very fascinating. Here's, um, you know, a guy working uh, on a kind of a grinder or something. And this is one of those frames within frames. Here's a frame over here, simply lit by this. Okay. Um, I've never actually dug these. These are the closet shopping ones. I never really dug these images out. This is a school within the Medina. Amazing expression on those children. I love that. But then, you know, the question is, okay, so I shot this series of photos <clears throat> of the people walking by. Now, how am I going to print that? So here's what I did. I'm going to get rid of me there for a second. So this is essentially, if you're familiar with what a contact sheet is, 
contact sheet is where you have a strip of negatives and you put them on paper and print them. And that's basically what I decided to do here. So <clears throat> I selected, uh, you know, these 12 different images and just put them together. There's a, a way to do that in Lightroom. And then ex uh, essentially just exported this as one photograph. This is all one JPEG here that I sent to my printer and made a big version of it. And it's up on my wall. And I, what I find interesting about it is just kind of a little story. It's like a little movie of these people walking by in different directions going through here. And you can see, I could zoom in a little bit. You can see expressions on these, some of these people. Um, and then, you know, the final, the final two are, uh, this kid was really funny. He just, he, st he stayed there. I have the video of him. He just stayed there for like many, many seconds, just looking at me and raising his hand. And then there's my wife. So this is something you can do. If you have a series of photographs and you're just not sure, you want to make them into one photograph, that's one way of doing it. I've never done that before, and I haven't done it since, but it, it just worked for that particular circumstance. So there's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, Jared, so let's get started here with our critiquing. All right. Who we got? Uh, our first one here is from Frank Waters, uh, A Tree in the Rain. He caught this with a Canon uh, T6i. T6i is a good, you know, it's amazing. It's a good workhorse camera. You can shoot a lot of videos with it. My son, <clears throat> who built a huge YouTube channel, they've got almost 6 million subscribers, shot everything on a, a T2i, right? And then I think maybe they upgraded somewhere along the line. So it's a it's a workhorse. You know, what's what I like about this is just the subtleness of it. It's essentially, it's like a, it really looks like a painting to me, almost like a Japanese painting. This could, you know, I could look at it and go, well, there's, it's like a bonsai. And just the background is clean and it fades off. It doesn't intrude into the photograph at all. Um, you know, it's, it's subtly processed. You know, you know, we're not seeing any tones that are really jumping out at us. It works. Good job. Good job. And the framing, you know, I think you've got really the framing in the right place. It's, it's you know, probably th r roughly thirds. I don't know if it's exactly thirds. It doesn't matter. We don't say rule of thirds here on AYP. And the other thing you've got is you've got uh, three-dimensionality because the background is fading away. You know, one of the things we really love to do with photographs is give them layers and depth. You know, that's not always, but it, it's a definitely a great tool. So our foreground is brighter than the background, and that shows that the background is fading off in the distance, and that gives us depth and layers. Good job. All right. Here's one. This is from Chad Tobin, and wow. he took this at a wrestling event in October. In October of yeah, this year? Yeah, that's what uh, he said. It was October 2020. I, I know that there were some local wrestling places which were taking like pretty good precautions. Like You can see it's not quite uh -huh. jam-packed. I think they're trying to make sure that people are uh, further away. I mean, they're somewhat socially distanced, but <laughs> okay, that's a really wild and interesting photograph. Yeah. You know, I always have a question: Are these are these things staged? It seems to me, you know, they're they learned some tricks on on how you know how to slam guys down and whatnot. But you know, what's interesting is the expression of the referee, and the black and white, by the way, works really good. And this guy who's just on top of this other dude, you know, in a really bad position. But I believe that's all faked. I think it's a stage uh, wrestling. I so, yeah. Yeah. But the black and white works really well. It's comical. And, you know, we've got the guy's butt on the right, which is kind of, you know, you can't miss it. And you can't miss this odd position he's got this other guy in. I guess he's just holding his neck down on the rope there. 
But the referee, you know, he doesn't look concerned. So you kind of get the signal that this isn't really, you know, a life and death matter. You're not really strangling him. So, yeah, somebody noted the fact that this image was taken in September 2020 makes it much more interesting. That's true. Like, how do they even do that? I am, I'm sure in my state we couldn't have done that. But anyway, good job. Black and white works really well. It adds a kind of a timeless quality to it. You know, this could drift in time. I guess there's a couple of things that maybe that, you know, the guy's, um, what do we call it on his, it's like swimming trunks. It's like the tidy, tidy trunks sort of give it away. That's Shorts. Probably, <laughs> uh, anyway, good one. Good one. All right. Uh, let's bring in, this is Monique's photo. Monique. Uh, and uh, she mentions, because Monique was there for our AYP Plus class with Fletcher Murray, uh -huh. where he talked about Rembrandt lighting and stuff. And so Rembrandt lighting on the fly. Thanks to, uh, thanks Fletcher for your talk. Yeah, listen, I love the, the rim lighting she's she's lit from the other side and we've got a lot of shading on this side and she's holding a camera right is that right yep okay. she is that, that's interesting it's a really yeah it's a very well as far as using light it works really well i my only critique on this and i really love the photograph so just you know i'm here to hopefully give you some guidance i would I would use a shallower depth of field so the background just goes away because it's competing just a little bit, right? Especially the, uh, I don't know what that is, like a chandelier above her head. I would prefer to see that just a blurry, yeah. You can do that in post-processing. You can deal with that. This is not, as far as I can tell, probably not a photojournalistic shoot, uh, shot. You know, you do have that option of of letting it blur away, put a mask on it and blur it away. But um, it's just something to remember, really, like when you're looking at your subject, you just want to make a decision like, do I want this background to be part of this image? Is it going to help? Sometimes it does. Or do I want it to disappear? So, you know, that's my only thought. Just crank that uh, aperture all the way open. You know, if you got 2.8, it would, you'd have to just make sure your focus is accurate, but I think that would really help this image. Otherwise, it's, it, I still love it. You know, I'm just gonna give you what I think could improve it. And listen, if you don't mind, why not try blurring that background in, in post? See what happens. But good job, and especially for taking Fletcher's advice. And uh, I don't know if it quite comes across uh, since, you know, I'm streaming it to you and you're streaming it to everybody else, but yeah. I really like that there's just this the rim like, lighting. little bit of brand of light that goes yeah. like almost this entire way. I think that's really cool that you were able to capture yes. that. And that it rim makes that great really separation cool. of how it's like perfectly dark here, but then there's that sliver of light. Absolutely. Yeah, the rim lighting is great. It's bravo. Good. All right. Uh, this is an interesting one. This one is from Ezra Fuller. And Ezra Fuller is currently working on uh, a project. Uh, he's doing an everyday series. So he's taking one photo every single day for 450 days so far. Wow. Um, the project is mostly pictures with some graphic design and renders using Blender. Uh, and so he gave us a couple, um, and they each have like a little commentary. Uh, and I, uh, you know, I just think it's so cool that he's doing this like multimedia project and doing something like this. And this particular one is a self portrait on a summer day. Uh, and this was taken June 16th, 2020. 2020. Okay. Uh, you know, it's really interesting, and the frame is interesting, is that, are we looking at a photograph in a frame on a wall? Kind of. Um, feels I'm like not it. sure exactly what this all is. Yeah. This it is definitely, like uh, this is a window, I think. So this is a reflection that he's 
taking it out on the street, but I don't know if he's oh, like mad at all of these. Yeah, no, but, yeah. I, I think I get it now. I think it's probably, yeah, you're right, just a window that's reflecting him. Good job. I mean, it's very interesting. And the lines, you know, the vertical lines are, and the horizontal lines give it an interesting kind of like a, a grid, but the grid is really just the Venetian blinds. Um, yeah, good job. And I, I'm bravo to you for your project. That is really not always easy to wake up every day and say, I'm going to make a photograph no matter what. And sometimes it's tempting to miss a day. So 400, what did we hear? 452 days in a row? That's Yeah, he's been doing it for 450 days so far. And uh, if you want to check out more of his stuff, uh, his post included several other ones. But this was one in particular I thought was really interesting. Awesome. Keep going on that and keep us informed on how that goes for you. I want to see the rest. And you know what? You should definitely check out some of our videos and stuff that we have about making books. Because it would be really cool definitely. to see you make something uh, out of this project. Absolutely. Yep. Um, good one okay all right going back to some lighting uh rami miller made this one uh in inspiration of it being lighting month which is where an uh, ayp yes. plus uh which by the way one person that we're reviewing their photos is going to get a free month uh -huh. of ayp plus uh so definitely submit your stuff but uh here's a head start to this month's lighting program this was a quick shot with a speed light bounced off of a ceiling. The composition lasted only a few seconds. Well, Rami, you've got you know good use of a speed light. It does feel like natural light, and I, there must have been some other light in the room, I'm guessing. And it's a very you know it's well lit because the background goes away. We see you know the woman and the puppy very clearly the skin tone on her hand and face you know there's nothing harsh there so you bounced it great and then it come came back you know so we're not dealing with harsh speed light my only point that i've heard you know as a criticism of speed light is it tends to like etch it can etch i mean if you are using it properly as you were we're not running into that but you just turned it up, boom, bounced it off the ceiling. You had a few seconds. Good job. And I love the pearl even is sort of popping, you know, in her earring. Yeah. Great. Good job, Rami. You're a pro. You're getting... All right. Let's take a look at this is a photo from Fernando. And uh, the caption with this one, let me find it. Uh, taken in his studio, an 85 millimeter lens using one or using one five foot oct octo box uh -huh. with a silver reflector behind the subject to slightly fill in the shadows. Yeah. Behind the subject gives us that, you know, yeah. And you're using a classic portrait lens, 85 millimeter you know her face is well lit she's mostly in shadows um it's a great it's a great profile photograph and is she pregnant yes she is yes okay and um yeah it's a beautiful photograph beautiful image lots of dark areas you know remember that you know that works in the last two photographs you've seen that actually in several of them we of, actually have a lot of photos with dark areas. A lot of week. dark areas, you know, and don't always like, you know, crank up your your shadows because then you open up all that interesting dark area, you know. I mean, that's why we use our sliders in, in terms of what is our vision on this thing. It's not just randomly, oh, I've got to always do this or i got to do that. You know, not with a set formula, but what's your vision here so your vision obviously was very shadowy uh, lots of darks but the face prominent and well lit which it is so our eye immediately goes to her face so that's well done good job all right sticking with this theme of the darker shadows uh this is from kevin uh and 
they gave the stats with it one light uh, camera right with one one light camera right with one reflector camera left let me just make sure i get that so basically one one light on the right and a reflector on the and left. reflector on the left yeah so okay we're, i think we're yeah, reversing that saying. yeah okay i got it. that makes sense I, a very interesting photograph and i love it and you know again it leaves a lot of mystery it's intriguing we've got the guy's beard we've got his arms it's um uh, you know it's an it's a very interesting composition and very good lighting you've got everything pretty you know i can see there's nothing really totally off the chart there you have the you know you have a whole dynamic range from black to there's a little bit of white on his shoulder there and of course the tattoos yeah it's great good job you know, and this is, brings up a good point. I, I've been criticized, you know, hey, you know, you're cutting off people's body parts and heads and stuff. What what rule book is that? Come on. What, wh why do I always have to photograph people, uh, you know, full on portrait? You know, why can't I take a portrait of their arms like this and part of their face? Those rules are just BS. You know, that's just somebody really just is trying to enforce their own you know and i try to unearth those whenever i can because it's just silly like that's not what art is about what do you do go to picasso and say hey why don't you make your paintings more realistic you know well long before picasso did his became picasso he did boy he mastered those absolutely perfect illustrate you know paintings and he just moved on from there because he wanted to show something completely different. And this is a unique photograph. So well done. That's what art is about. It's about, you know, finding something that's different and presenting it to other people, showing them what you saw. It doesn't always have to be different. But every great photographer, every great artist that I know of did that. You know, Edward Weston found the pepper, you know, pepper number 30, went up to pepper number 39, and he just kept photographing and photographing until he got what he wanted. Who else was photographing peppers? Nobody. Everybody else is cutting them up and putting them in their salad or frying them up and putting them in, in, you know, fajitas or whatever dish might have green peppers in it. And he said, I'm going to photograph this. Okay. You got me off on a little tangent, but it is important to remember that is what art is all about is what you see and what you create and what you present to other people. Good job. Okay, this one's really interesting, and it definitely goes to, we've talked about this before, that you should put like something interesting in like your caption or description of a story. And the title of this one is so fascinating. So this is the image. It's by Lucas. And the caption that they gave with it was after influencers left in Turkey. So this photo was taken in Turkey. After influencers left? Yeah. So I'm guessing from that that they mean like there's some kind of like, I don't know, like TikTok stars or something. Oh, and they like how funny. Maybe. And I don't know what they did, but this is this is what happens after they left. Okay. So they were using these as props, looks like, these ice cream yeah. cones. And they just said, okay, we're done. Uh, not very considerate of the environment you're leaving behind. But, you know, as far as you're capturing it and your art, it's really cool. I love it. I love the, you know, the colors of the cones of the ice cream dripping out. And, uh, you know, the little puddle at the bottom. And that does, re, you know, leaves a kind of an ethical point, I think, not for you, but the people who left this behind. That's not what we should be doing as artists, by the way, you know. we I, I come from mountaineering training where you always leave your camp better than what you found. Always. And I was trained so severely on that. One time, as a group of young mountaineering students, our instructor schooled us because he found like one little piece of tinfoil or something in the camp or, and he sent us all the way back it was like seven or eight miles to go back and clean that camp and come back again so we doubled our trip 
And it taught me a valuable lesson. Don't ever do that. So these, but that's not really what this photograph's about. It's an interesting photograph. But I think your comment, your caption, also lets us know this wasn't a staged photograph. This is actually making a statement of some sort. And it works. It works really well. All right. Our next one is one that you are going to enjoy. Wayne, our friend from Texas. Uh, oh, look at that. Some cameras that they have recently acquired from a relative. I uh, oh, can't good. wait to push Lucky some you. film through these. I took portraits of each and uh, showcased them in my studio. These are these classic. Are, the yeah, I thought that I, I could have picked one, but you're really big into some of these cameras, so I yeah. thought we'd go through them. It's a Yashica twin lens, and it's modeled after this camera here, which is the Roloflex, which is kind of the the one that set the pace. But Yashica made a really good, I've never used them, but it's 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 you know a, a great brand. Uh, let's see what the other ones are. I'm just curious. Yeah. A Mamiya twin lens. These are all, for folks that don't know, these are twin lenses. It's got two lenses. The top one you focus with, you... You, you see what's in the frame, and the bottom one shoots. It's an interesting concept that's disappeared. I mean, they don't make modern twin lens. You don't need that anymore because we either go mirrorless or uh, DSLR. But this is two lenses. And it it has, you know, in the, in the, in the day, it was very, really effective. And it was, I you know, I've shot thousands of photographs with this. All right, let's see what else we have here. Asahi Pentex. I had one of these. Spotomatic. Yeah, those were good cameras. And that was a, that was one of the workhorse uh, uh, SLR, single lens reflex film, 35 millimeter film. You'd shoot 24 exposures or 35, and that was it. 36 exposures, rather. And uh, you took them home and you developed them and that was your your project for the day. Cool. Thank you for showing this. Those are, oh, here's had... another one. This is a Mamiya single lens reflex. Okay. So we're looking, we don't have the two lenses. We're looking through one lens. Okay, that was their kind of next stage up. And that sort of mirrored the, I don't know if you can see. Yeah. So it mirrored the Hasselblad here. Over here, that's what I've got. Can't really see it too well, but that's a Hasselblad. So I think they, you know, they just picked up on that. Anyway, yeah. great, great. Yeah, Did, thought you'd enjoy that. Well done on getting those cameras. I'm jealous. <clears throat> and great images of them, too. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, you know, kind of taking product shots, this is from our uh, photojournalist friend, Julian. Uh -huh. and uh, he recently needed to sell a van. And so he used his photography skills to make it look good and make it look appealing. Yeah, that's really smart. Like you're putting it on eBay, let's say, or not eBay, but Craigslist. And it's a cool picture. I, ne You know, it's funny. I've never thought of trying to make a cool product shot. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it will help because it's more interesting and it's more aesthetic. You know, what you're trying to do is make your object that you're selling stand out and that certainly does the reflection is really smart you know we've got snow we've got it's got this feeling of interest you know like that's interesting because of the reflection so smart next time i you know i just sold a vacuum cleaner but it was just up against the wall <laughs> maybe i should have taken it out and had it reflect or do something I did sell it, so I guess it worked, but very utilitarian. Um, however, you you did a great job in featuring this this van from some years ago. I can't put a date on it. I'm going to guess 10, 12 years old, something like that. Uh, and the wheels, you know, it's fascinating how they reflect. So good job. And I hope you sell it. Yes. All right, uh, this from one Julian to another. Uh, this one's uh, taken by Julian Fletcher. Just before the world changed, taken back in February 2020, I could spend hours in the London Underground. Oh, yes, there we are in the London Underground. 
And we are looking at the guy on the left, two frames, the guy on the right. I don't quite understand. Oh, I guess I think that, that's reflect. a reflection. That's a reflection. Yep. That makes more sense because now, anyway, it's a double frame, which is always interesting. Um, and they're very contrasted with each other. Like, you know, there's a definite political statement going on with the guy on the left, just based on his tats. And I could probably read, I don't know, whatever. He's got a little message on his head. It's uh, the world doesn't owe you anything. I see. Is what it says. It's got an interesting bunch of images there. Not the friendliest sort. Although it's funny, his face doesn't look gruff and mean. It's just he's got using his his head as a as a billboard. And then, then this other guy seems very dejected over here. So it's kind of like, you know, two different, absolutely two different worlds going on that haven't meshed or been put together so it's very effective it's a you know effective uh photojournalistic shot that you've got there good job all right this one is from Lele uh and or Lele. <clears throat> not sure how to pronounce that uh but it is the godfather is the caption <laughs> i see that it's very interesting how you framed it um is it snow coming down it looks like maybe i'm not so, sure or or it could be the window because it, it looks like the that's the reflection of that's Her. that's them shooting the photographer yeah that could be a re so i'm I guessing see. it's yeah it's but it very does create a very interesting effect it's very interesting how you framed it you know um you know with the with the guy so low in the frame and it's you know it has that element of mystery because we don't see what's going on. Again, it's your call as an artist how you you know how you use your frame. That's basically what our game is as photographers. You know we've got this frame. It's like our canvas, and where we put our subject within that frame is really the you know major skill uh, of your photography. I mean you've got the technical things of you know, in this case, you did let the background blur out and, you know, there's light on the subject and all those those points are in place. But you you chose something interesting just in terms of putting his head all the way down here, not a full body, not a shell, shoulder shot. Good job. I mean, listen, this is art. This is what this is all about. And black and white, of course, works really well here. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right, this one is from Yvette, uh, and it looks like Yvette's been going through some of their older photos. They said this was part of one of the photos they took uh, 20 years ago in Hungary. I love this, Yvette. It's really cool. And now that I look at it, I see that you had your camera turned quite a bit, you know, to give us this wild angle of the child on the swing. Because if I turn it, and I see the ground kind of level, it ch totally changes, but that's really cool. And of course your lines, you know, your diagonal lines here on this um, framing from the swing set and then all the texture in the background. <clears throat> it's awesome. And I'm curious how you processed it. Did you just change sliders in Lightroom or Photoshop or did you use Silver FX Pro, which I think is amazing software uh just curious if you want to make a note let us know it was better back then yeah or i was better back then <laughs> oh i was better okay you still make great stuff now now you're doing great anyway good job thank you for sharing that with us all right uh here's one take a guess at who i this have is from. no idea who this is there's no impossible way to know but uh, mm -hmm. i wanted to share this because amy and i've I've seen oh. several of these, but Amy's been, um, she's been mounting and like framing a lot of her work. Yes. And Amy sent me, thank you again. Uh, I'm, I, I need, I owe you, uh, some feedback, but she sent me her blur book that she just made recently, 
um, with some of her images in it. And well done, Amy. Such a great thing, you know. Get them made, you know. You can, Bay Photo will make these for you, by the way. But, um, you know, I love it. And thanks again. Um, I'll give you some formal feedback. But you've got more images in here. I just love the way you're taking this thing and going all the way with it. You know, it's like you must spend some time setting these things up. These are not just quick, you know. Selfies, like, that's what it means. It's sort of this quickie, you know, snapshot. She is actually using herself as a model and setting up the shot. You can see that because each one of these is fairly elaborate, especially the one in the top left. That took some work. Yeah. You know, you had to get the the shadowing just right. And I'm not sure if that... I believe these are embedded objects because looking at her caption, she said, I've been printing, mounting, encaustic, oh. waxing, oil painting, and embedded found objects and sometimes yeah, collaging my photos. So I think those... Spines? I mean, that's what I may be wondering if. But that's actually embedded into the photograph. Wow, that makes yes. it even more interesting. Yeah, okay. And I see on this next one as well, there's some leaves there. Okay. I mean, talk about taking, you know, full advantage of making art. <laughs> your canvas. Yeah, and you're definitely. And then these are your. I don't know what are those, <laughs> whatever. It doesn't matter. I think those are feathers. Yeah, and then chicken, fish. Scales. Yeah, these are fish. I remember when she posted those. I think these are some of the like waxing. And good job, Amy. You are definitely an artist, and I love seeing you do stuff that I've never seen before. You're, and that's for, I want to encourage that with all of you guys. I saw a quote last night. <clears throat> I got to think of it. What was it? I read it in the middle of the night and I went back to sleep. I was reading a book by Jeff Bridges, the actor, mm. who is also a really great photographer. And I've been corresponding with him, trying to get him on the show. At some point, I hope to. Um, yeah. Now, I remember the quote, but I'm trying to remember who said it. But it was, there are no mistakes. Something like, get over it. There are no mistakes. Oh, I remember and somebody can Google this. Miles Davis. Miles Davis, the amazing trumpet player. My good friend who passed away recently, Chick Corea, played in his band. Miles Davis was off the chart as far as I'm concerned. But he said, don't worry. Something like, and I need to get the exact quote. Don't worry. There are no mistakes. And, you know, as soon as we get over this stigma about making a mistake, all sorts of things can improve. Not just your art, but life itself. Because, yeah, we can make mistakes. We can do things wrong. We can take our car and bump it into a, you know, a, a tree. I've done that. And it's expensive. But in art, it, it usually doesn't result in a disaster or a costly error like that. Where you, okay, there's nothing cool about denting your car. But... Sometimes we hold ourselves back because we're afraid to make mistakes. And if we can get rid of that. And your great artists, I think one of the things that made them great is they just didn't have that concern. What's the worst that can happen? You know, he's playing trumpet. You can hear there were notes that might not be considered harmonious. But that didn't matter. That was part of his art. And he was doing that on purpose because he was an astounding trumpet player so we have to be able to break through that and just go there are no mistakes we can learn from these things if nothing else you know very important lesson okay we've got time for one or two more and then jared and i've yeah, got to get back unfortunately there's going to be a lot of people we can't quite get to your photos that's what yeah. happens when you take a week off but and i'm we... keeping all the photos uh so don't worry we'll try and get to those uh, next week. Uh, in the meantime, let's do one or two more. We'll do one or two more, and then we're going to sample this music with you guys. Uh, this one is from Patrick, and the caption with it was, A Foggy Morning at the Pier. And a surfer. I mean, you know, it's funny. When you're a surfer, your eye immediately 
goes to two things. It goes to the waves and goes to any surfers present. <laughs> so it's very soft, very subtle, diagonal line going through there. You know, there's a lot of light from behind because even though it's a super foggy, overcast day. Um, thank you. Let's put, uh, back up here for a second. Kevin got the quote. Good job. Do not fear mistakes. There are none. Yeah, there you go. And I read that literally in the middle of the night. So thanks for digging that out. Miles Davis, do not fear mistakes. There are none. Isn't that a great motto? I think we're going to adopt it. Okay. That's good. Thank you for finding that, Kevin. Okay. So back to this one. I love the softness of it, you know, and the light. There's lots of light behind this pier. And the diagonal line, and then just this one surfer walking out to catch a wave. And boy, do I know what that feels like. It's such a great feeling. If the, if the waves are big, there's like fluttering in your stomach. If they're small, like it looks like today, that day, no big deal. You're just kind of sauntering in there. And many times you're so, what we call stoked, you, you're running. You're running. <laughs> running in there. This guy's not running. He's just walking. And there's a couple of three people on the right, too, that add some interest and a couple of people on the pier. It's cool. It looks very timely. Timeless, rather. Could be 20 years ago, 30 years ago. You know, that's very cool. Good job. All right. And for our last one of the day, we've got one from John, John Morgan. Uh, completely stepped out of my comfort zone and shot a wedding this weekend. It's been a long time since doing portraits. Had a blast shooting. The happy couple. Uh, would you please critique? And then also had a note, which might be interesting to talk about quick. Uh, on another note, I did the math. 63% of my shots were ruined by random hands with cell phones popping up oh. at the last second, blocking the composition. You know, that's become a problem for wedding photographers. Mm -hmm. Right. I know and some some wedding photographers put it in their contract and yeah. some people mentioned this uh, in the comments on the on the club uh, that you specifically tell guests that they are not to take photos. Yeah, it can definitely ruin a photograph. I mean, if you sometimes you, you can get a cool shot, you know, of somebody holding the phone and you're shooting. And da -da -da, but that's like not really what you're there for. Isn't that funny? really like snapshots interfering no it's not really funny it's not cool at all um anyway this is a very interesting photograph because these this doesn't look like a happy couple to me at all <laughs> it looks like she's ticked off and he's got a frown on his face so i don't know that's an interesting moment which kind of adds to sort of the mystery of it like what is going on here also, you can see they're up against some kind of a warm water, water, warm wall here, texture-wise, and very yellow, and that's, you know, coming across in their skin as well. It's an interesting photograph because you caught something going on, and who knows what it is. She's maybe clowning. Maybe she really is mad. I don't know. Maybe it's their first fight. So, anyway, good one. Um, let's answer the question that Jeff M. had here. Can you yeah. only participate? Go ahead, and you can answer that. Yeah, uh, so can you only participate in the AYP or AYP Plus on Facebook? Don't have a Facebook account and don't intend to get one. Um, if you want to submit a photo, I do sometimes take submissions. Uh, but AYP Plus uh, is not connected to Facebook. That's right. Um, it's its own platform. So, so as far as participating in the classes that we have, um, we do it through a pro, uh, platform called Kajabi. Um, and it's really great. Um, you get a whole archive of all the classes that we've done since we started, um, some exclusive content. And it has its own little community area where people can share their photos there and such too. Um, so definitely encourage you to check that out. Um, links in the description and in the chat. I'll put another one up. But it's really cool, and people have been really enjoying the classes that we've been doing. And we want, we always love to hear from you guys. We've, we've done a survey recently to make sure we're, we're tuned in to what your needs are. Okay, Jared, let's, let's uh, 
sample these two selections. So here's how we'll do it. We'll, if you like um, number one, put a one in there. If you like number two, put a number two in it. If you don't like either of them, put a zero. How's that? But please, everybody hit their keyboard. We need and, your feedback. And to give you an idea of what we're, you're going to be looking at, these are introductions for the chapters of the new course. So it's we've just, got a little bit of music playing with, yeah. with a clip, and then it's how we lead into the course. So here's the first one. And we're only asking you about the music, not, not the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. Just it's specifically know what the music we're trying to decide What on. you think about the music. So here's the first one. Chapter two, visualization. Now listen, visualization is the most important part of the So that's that one. There's so that. That's one. That guy. And then Don't vote on the, the host here. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Chapter two, visualization. Now listen, visualization is the most important part of the whole cycle of the so no, one or two, I'll, I'll play them both again. What's the Here's grading? One again. Do you like number one? Put a one in your, just type one. If you like the second one better, type two. If you don't like either of them, just write zero. And here they are again. Here's one. We're listening to the music. Chapter two, visualization. Now listen, visualization is the most And here's two. Chapter two, visualization. Now listen, visualization is the most important part of the whole cycle of photography. Thank you, thank you. All right, looks like one is pretty popular so far. Keep keep doing it, one, two. Oh, one, yeah, two, so has not great, okay. Here's one, we'll do one more round. Chapter two, visualization. Now listen, visualization is... Chapter two, visualization. Now listen, visualization is the most important part of the whole cycle of photography. Okay. Keep doing the, your grading. By the way, we, we have released this in a beta form and a number of you guys have uh, reviewed it. I know Yvette has, Craig, uh, John, and I really appreciate your feedback. I You know, I really enjoy this process of creating something, whether it's a book or a video, and letting people see it before we release it. I'm not so arrogant that I think, oh man, I've just got to have this perfect before, you know, our, everything I do is perfect. I like to put it out to the community and let, hear back from you, and this, what you're doing right now is very helpful. We'll count up those votes after you put them in there. Okay, so Jared, the only last thing, I think we need to give away a month of AYP plus. Yes. So I'm gonna Lele. Okay. Um so I've done what was that? I've made the list. Oh, sorry. I guess that <laughs> revealed it. I forgot that I'm sharing my audio. I <laughs> I try to I I I feel really bad when I don't pronounce people's names right. So you've got a little and speaking so I thing. will often look up pronunciation guides. Uh, to get it. So I guess that reveals the person who won was uh, Lele. I think that's how you pronounce it. Lele. That's how the internet's telling me it's pronounced. Okay, uh, Lele. And let me grab their photo as a reminder of... And so congratulations. Uh -huh. uh, you've won a month of AYP+. Plus. I'll be sending you a message a little bit later after the show on how you can claim uh, that free month we're really excited. We hope that you enjoy it, especially as we're currently in our month of lighting. Uh, yes. So we've already done two weeks all about lighting, uh, from Fletcher Murray joining us to reviewing uh, what Bambi Cantrell, who's an amazing portrait photographer, and her advice. We're going to have uh, Joshua Schultz more great ones. coming up, too. Mm -hmm. Another great photographer. So... Thanks again for everybody that submitted your photos. Sorry we couldn't get to everybody, but we will be keeping them on file uh, and definitely keep submitting images, and we'll uh, try to get to even more people next week. Awesome. And I see a number of you have 
voted. Uh, would you, hey, Jared, hit him one more time. Just we, I'd like everybody to help us on this one, and because yeah. uh, we're going to put this to in the video in the next few minutes, literally your. Yeah, literally, this is our process of editing. We were editing right before the show went live, and we will probably co we will continue to edit throughout the day and tomorrow. Yeah, so this this helps us. We're I have my own idea, but I want to hear from you guys. So just play those two, and then we're gonna. All right. So this is one. Nope. Chapter two visualization. I'll do that one again. Now listen. One. Chapter two, visualization. That was now listen. One. And here's two. What's it for? Chapter two, visualization. So you now like that? Visualization. The second one, definitely. I see that. Oh wait a minute. So which one are we going for? One is sweeter than sugar. Does that mean you don't like it? I guess. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. So you like two. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah, we're 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 looking at like fifty fifty almost, but I know, it's we're good to know to that people like it. Nobody said zero. So. Yeah, I didn't see any zeros. Uh, That's good to hear. Okay. Love it. This is just a behind the scenes of how we work. <laughs> but one of the hardest things oh, for us man. is picking music. I don't know how many of you have ever worked on projects where you have to find oh. just the right song, but it can sometimes that's the longest part of the process for us is it can drive you trying crazy. to find crazy yeah because you know sometimes you we've had a few where you know we had we use this cool software we open it up and i hit the first one boom that that's very rare you know and you've got to get the right emotion it has to all fit you know so anyway thank you guys for your input all right. Well, I always enjoy this show, and I enjoy seeing you guys in AYP Plus in our master class. It's really a pleasure. So do not forget to, here we go. got to click this little button here. Don't forget to, if you haven't already done so, subscribe and enable the bell. Okay, because if you don't enable the bell, YouTube isn't going to let you know that we've got new videos. And there's going to be a slew of them coming up. Little snippets out of these courses, going out and shooting. I'm going to do a bunch of new interviews. There's a spring, our spring lineup is going to explode. Okay. And Jared, have we left anything out? <clears throat> I don't think so. Subscribe. Uh, keep sharing your photos on AYP Club. We we love this show so we much. It. It's yeah. so much fun. It's our break, really. It it hardly feels like work at all. Exactly for us. I said it in the chat. Uh, we we really enjoy it, and we love seeing your work. And it's just so much fun. You guys, are, listen. I don't want to brag about it, but this course is really good. You know, I look at sometimes I look at my own videos and go, hey. That guy seems to know what he's talking about. I think he's, we got to keep our eye on him. Anyway, really, it's a great course. The book is, you know, I put so many years into writing this book, and it's available to you guys. Don't forget to get a copy. And listen, other than that, I want you to stay safe, stay well, get out. Get on your walks, go out and photograph things, you know, wear your mask, but, but get outside. It's really important to look and see and get off your computer and look at window or windows, look at trees and <laughs> things. Windows are fine too. And do not forget, remember, say it with me, remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Love you guys. See you soon. Have a great weekend.